the paddle separate team's responsibility is to move the paddle. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to clear the old paddle position. The paddle is three pixels wide, so we have three JM clear statements. Then we're going to compute the new paddle position. We do that by using the tilt sensor, the analog to digital converter, the variable connected to the accelerometer. Um, the rest position of the accelerometer is half is, uh, is half scale or 1.65 volts. The analog to digital converter reports values in millivolts, so we're going to subtract 1650 and divide by 100 to get a value like minus 5 to 5 to figure out how many pixels to move the paddle by, and then we're going to add that to the current paddle position. If the paddle position went out of bounds, we're going to bring the paddle position back into bounds. It's a, it's a 16 by 5 uh, LED matrix. And finally, we're going to set the new paddle position here uh, just by displaying the three pixels at the new position. That's the end of the subroutine. That is running every 50 milliseconds asynchronous, managing the paddle position while the main program is managing the ball position. So all we have left now is the lose subroutine. The lose subroutine basically uh, is called when the user loses the game. First thing we want to do is we don't want to be displaying the paddle while we're you know scrolling the message you lose and playing the music. So we mask the virtual timer number one so that we stop calling the paddle subroutine. We're going to unmask that at the end so that we can start calling the paddle subroutine every 50 milliseconds again for the new game. Then we clear the display, clear everything that's on there, we scroll you lose off of it, and then we play an audio scale. We start out by saying let audio equal 5,000. Boom, there's a 5,000 hertz tone going to the buzzer. Then we do a loop that basically just decreases that by one note every 50 milliseconds until we reach 400 hertz. Um, then we turn the audio off, and when we scroll this message, you lose, that was done asynchronously. So we're going to wait for that to finish scrolling off the screen by scrolling another message behind it, and then unmask the timer interrupt to allow the paddle uh, manipulation to continue, and then return from this subroutine, so that, and then we're going to break out of the inner while loop, return to the, main, the outer while loop, and start a new game. That's basically Pong in BASIC. Okay, let's do a quick wireless demo. We've got the badge board attached to the uh, 1320X RFC card. Uh, you'll notice that a couple of things are different here. Basically, uh, the MCU talks to the Zigbee wireless chip through QSPI, and QSPI is actually multiplexed on the exact same pins that are used for driving the LED. So the operating system detects that the Zigbee chip is there and uh, doesn't send LED traffic to these pins, but there is QSPI traffic on the pins, which is now visible on the LEDs. Anyway, but uh, basically, we've got a command prompt. We're talking to that board. Um, we are node ID 7, Zigbee node ID 7. We've got another board over here that is a, um, it's a uh, Ethernet board, 52233, uh, also running the same operating system. And he's running Zigbee node ID 3. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect to him remotely. So we don't even have an Ethernet cable attached to this board. We are now wirelessly talking to the Ethernet chip. Um, and uh, we're going to write a small program here. 10 dim LED as pin D pin 0 for analog output. And what that basically does is that creates a variable um, bound to pin D10 0 where there happens to be an LED and it configures the pin for analog output, basically pulse width modulation. So we're going to vary the duty cycle on the PWM and that's going to change the intensity of the LED. 20 while 1 do 30 and while. Now you're like, wait a second, that's an infinite loop. Anyway, Yes, it's an infinite loop. Basically, this is only half the program, right? We're going to write half the program on node ID 3. We're going to write the other half of the program on node ID 7. This, this, basically, this node, node ID 3, is just going to sit there forever with a variable bound to a pin, and that variable is going to be modified from the other node. So, we're going to run the infinite loop. Not very exciting. We're going to press Control D to return back to the other node. We're going to verify we're there, um, and we're back on node ID 7. And now we're going to write, actually, we might even have it already, Ha! Huh, look at that. There's a program there already. Um, this program basically is going to run on node ID 7, and the first thing he does is he dimensions a variable named LED, same name as on the other node, and he says, you know what? This variable isn't here. It's not present on my node. It's actually remote on node ID 3. That's what he's saying here. Dim LED as remote on node ID 3. So, any time that we modify that, that variable, what's going to happen is basically... Um, we are going to uh, send out a Zigbee request to the other node, and he's going to modify his variable, and his variable happens to be bound to his pin where the LED is, and so we're going to create a remote LED dimmer. Um, then we go through the same work that we did before. Basically, we, we declare uh, sleep and tilt uh, to talk to the accelerometer, and then we run this little tiny loop, um, which basically just says, every 100 milliseconds, take the LED uh, take the tilt value and assign it to the LED that's going to go wireless over to the other node and so as you tilt this board the other board's LED is going to respond with varying intensities of brightness. So we can run that 
and we pick up this guy, we tilt him, and sure enough, the LED on the other board is changing intensity as we move this guy's accelerometer. Um, anyway, so that's pretty cool. That's a, uh, you know, there's three, three lines on the other node and eight lines here, 11 line wireless embedded system control program. Obviously, we didn't, we, we didn't save them, we didn't set them to auto run, but basically, you know, takes less lines than that to do an on-off switch, you know, wireless switch. Okay, what am I showing you now? Okay, no trip to my house is complete without a visit to my toaster oven. My toaster oven has a thermocouple and a solid state relay here. And basically, uh, I'm running a 52221 down here on this little tiny circuit board that plugs right into a solderless breadboard. And we're running the operating system, we're running BASIC, uh, and we've got a BASIC control program that basically controls the toaster oven. I've got a Zigbee wireless board on top, and a little solderless breadboard there, and a battery, and basically we can log in and we can reflow printed circuit boards in our toaster oven. So we've seen a lot today. Basically, we've seen my dream come true. Right? We've got a real, honest-to-goodness computer on a chip. Not just a programmable chip, a computer on a chip. It's got an operating system, editor, compiler, debugger, everything's interactive. You can log in via e either USB or Ethernet or even Zigbee. You plug a little card on the back and <coughs> you've got a Zigbee wireless control node. It's got a little CR2 battery holder on the bottom. Right? That's a 52221 running there. Just like the 51JM28, a little bit more expensive, a little bit bigger. Um, but basically, you've got everything that you need in order to put one of these guys in your attic or in your yard or anywhere you want. You can write a program on it without reading a 500-page reference manual, right? You want to continue, you want to use the peripherals, you want to use an analog digital converter, one line of code. You want to use a timer, one line of code. You want to use, you know, pulse width modulation or frequency generation or digital input or output, one line of code, right? Your, your program no longer is responsible for managing all the peripherals. All it does is link them together. You want to do wireless? You can talk between one of these nodes and another node. You can, you know, R log in from one to the other. They can talk to each other while they're running programs. You can do, you know, your remote light switch, remote LED dimmer, everything with handfuls of lines of code. My goal is to bring embedded systems development to the masses, to the people who don't want to read the 500 page reference manual, which, by the way, isn't me. I love reading that 500 page reference manual, but not everybody does, right? I want to bring embedded systems to high schools. I want to bring embedded systems to reach researchers running in labs who have data acquisition that they need to do or data control that they need to do. And the guy who's got his weather station sitting outside his window and he doesn't want to run a wire to it. I want to bring embedded systems everywhere. And you know what? With these new Freescale processors, the 51JM128, the 52221, the 52233, there's no excuse not to do this. We've got everything we need right there on the processor. All we have to do is make it a little easier to use, expose it to the right user, you know, give him that interactive, programmable computer on a chip. Thank you very much. So two last things. The first thing is, yeah, you know, the basic is really cool and it might be a nice way to get things up and running, you know, rapid prototyping or something like that, but you know, I don't really think that I want to ship something with basic, right? I don't want to, I don't want to keep it basic. You know, can I, can I help? Well, yes. This leads into the last thing. The last thing is, where do you get more information? Right? It's all on the web at www.cpustick.com. It's kind of like a memory stick, only it's a CPU stick. Right? You can plug in your USB, you can write your program, you can save your program, you can take it with you, put it in your pocket, anything you want. On that website, there are all sorts of things. There's versions of the operating system for the 51JM128 and specific ones for the batch board that comply to the batch board bootloader requirements. Um, there's versions for the 52221 that use USB for the 52233 using Ethernet. There's also a skeleton source code project there. And what that is basically is all the initialization code used by the operating system as well as all of the pin manipulation and peripheral manipulation code including flash memory, including wireless, Zigbee wireless, including, uh, you know, timers, you know, pulse width modulation, uh, frequency generation, analog to digital converters, you know, digital I.O., everything is all there basically in source code form in the skeleton project so that once you've got your program written and running in BASIC, if you want to, you can actually translate it into C and you can bind in all the exact same low-level code used by the operating system and make a C program. Anyway. Basically, what you're seeing out on the web is my dream come true. And I think that, uh, I think we've got exciting things in store for us here, and these processors are just going to get better and better and better, and I'm just, I'm happy to be here with it. Anyway, thank you very much.